Hi, we're here today at the WAC Gallery here in London at Waterloo and we're about to go into a, this exhibition which is titled Nigeria at 100, Transforming a British Experiment. So here we have artists from the Nigerian Art Society showcasing artworks which they've all made responding to the theme of the evening which is looking at the amalgamation of the north and the south of Nigeria in 1914 and celebrating that 100 in this present year. So we're going to take a journey inside and have a look at the artist's work and also be interviewing them and hearing about their inspirations and their ideas towards the theme and how they're all looking forward and think what they all think about Nigeria here. Um, celebrating our independence today also and also thinking about Nigeria at 100 after the amalgamation of the north and south. Um, my name is Lamide and I am interviewing Ray Soka tonight and we are looking at his piece, Reaching Out. So Ray, please tell us a little bit more about this piece and yourself as an artist. Yeah, I'm Ray Soka. I've been practicing in the United Kingdom for quite a couple of years, about over 20 years and we're trying to push the African frontier for art, I mean, as much as we can. But basically, if you look at this work, this, this is a, a very important piece of work because this actually is my assessment of what's going on with regards to um, Nigeria 54 years of independence. And I'm trying to capture the mood or what's happening. Because um, basically, if you look at it, it's... Um, the theme of this work is reaching out and I'm beginning to question, okay, how far are we going to reach out? Because we've got this strong African tradi tradition about, you know, the family, you know, you, you've got to help members of the family or whatever. But the bottom line is what we are having in Nigeria today is a question of people actually for instance, I'll give you an example. People go to, to, people train their kids. They go to universities, they go to secondary schools, universities, or whatever. But they end up when they finish their education, you know, so you expect, okay, this guy, the, the, this new, the new kids who went to school have now finished school, you understand? So it's their time to actually support the older generation, to actually send them there. But that's not the case. What we're having now is a, this whole reaching out thing is being extended so far, you understand, and we do have a, a situation where, like, I mean, what's the, what's the point, you understand, what's the point in sending kids to school? Because if you look at the, the walk itself, you understand, you've got a couple of hands reaching out, you understand, but when is that going to stop? Because you, 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 we usually, you've got to think, say, okay, after, after the kids have been trained, you expect them to come back home, and help us out. We, the elderly people, I'm about 50, I'm over 50. 
Um, but the problem now is that we've got to keep on supporting these kids. I mean, recently in Nigeria, we had a situation where the immigration services, they had about, I mean, 2,000 jobs going or whatever, you understand? And we had almost a, over 100,000 people applying for that, you know? So it's like, I mean, when is this whole thing going to end? So this is what um, I'm questioning the whole concept about. Okay, let's reach an out thing. How far do we have to reach out? But it, it's, it's basically, it basically boils down to the fact that, look, the infrastructure is failing us. And that's my conclusion about where we are 54 years or 100 years after whatever, where we are today. Um, thank you very much for, for this beautiful work that you have, you have given us to here today. Good evening, Mr. Kunle Adegboriyoye. Please could you tell us a bit about more of your work, this one, When We Were Kings? Right, When We Were Kings is um, a celebration of Nigeria. Um, Nigeria is 100 years old today and in those days, Nigeria used to be exceptionally good. We have a lot of activities that goes on, and that's what the paint is all about. Unlike the negative activities that is going on in the society now, like the kidnapping and everything. So that is basically what this title, When We Were Kings, is all about. So it's basically taking into consideration the three major parts of Nigeria, the north, the south, and the west. And the figures there, in 1914, when the amalgamation of Nigeria was um, made by Lord Lugard, we had a dream. And at the end of the day, the dream was not, uh, up to this time, has not been materialized. So um, that was, in those days we said we, had, we were kings because um, people were happy, jobs were there, I know a lot of people that traveled from, I mean, came to England to study, and they went back to Nigeria to set up businesses, but eventually something went wrong somewhere, and the whole thing was upside down, and today, unfortunately, there's so many negative thoughts about Nigeria. Yes, I see it's, it's more of a collage, like you said, of the different parts of what makes Nigeria. So you said that it was a dream that went a little bit into a little bit into a nightmare yes yes so how do you think we can revive that dream again well we just have to be positive and be honest and be sincere in whatever we do and um, having said that Nigeria is the way God does this negative that we still have very good Nigerians that are trying to make things possible but I personally think probably because of the population or something there are so many bad eggs within the system but there are a lot of people. I mean, for instance, what we are doing is a positive thinking about Nigeria. Yes. Uh, unlike what we have about Nigerians doing this in the Western world, this is a positive thing. And these are things that we will keep doing. We keep striving. And a lot of positive people will still keep working. We will not give up until Nigeria becomes being the rightful place where it's supposed to be. We have the human resources. We have the energy. We have the money. We have everything in Nigeria. So Nigeria should not be where it is today. Nigeria should be a world leader because we have intelligent people all over sectors in Nigeria. So I believe with, little, with more efforts, with God on our side, I believe we will, we will get there. My name is Dotun Adegbite. I am an artist. Art's my first love. <laughs> Um, I'm a member of the Nigeria Art Society and this exhibition is uh, called Nigeria at 100, uh, Transforming a British Experiment. This is trying to portray Nigeria from when we started 100 years ago and how far we've gone today in terms of our political, social, and economic uh, existence. Now, this theme is chosen uh, in order to focus on Nigeria and the way, we, the way forward, basically. Now, I have provo I produced two works here. Uh, the first one over there is, uh, is acrylic on canvas, 
and it's called the vision. And as we all know, you need a vision so that you have something to uh, follow. So you have a goal, you have an end point, you have an outcome. Without a vision, you will be all over the place. But unfortunately, even though we have a vision, the vision is currently divided. It's divided because there are vetted interests. It's divided because we are yet to see ourselves as one nation. So everybody has vision for Nigeria, but there's a division because of those interests, either because it's Northern or Southern or Christian or Muslim or tribal. And I try to depict that in that painting, having a division in the center. Even though there's a vision, there's all kinds of scattered kind of effects around it. And using those bright colors and the dull colors to show the balance in terms of the good and the bad. And at the same time, you see the various lines there depicting ladder, showing that the future is bright. We have a way to go and we're climbing up. But by and large, I believe that Nigeria has potential. And it is a hope that that potential will be achieved eventually. But we will keep the vision. No matter how divided it is, we'll keep it. And eventually there will be a unity whereby we can all focus and move forward as a nation. So that's the essence of that vision. Uh, painting called Vision, which is uh, acrylic on canvas. Thank you very much. What would you say your vision is for Nigeria for the next hundred years? My vision for Nigeria for the next hundred years, I think, is going to be exciting. We already seen the good news uh, in terms of the economy, in terms of Nigeria being the number one. Uh, in terms of the economy in, in Africa. Uh, regardless of uh, how subjective that may be, it shows that there's a potential. And I think the whole world, both the Western world and the third world and the world in general, believe that Nigeria is a country with potential. And as long as that potential is harnessed and all the, all the talents are harnessed together, we stand to become the true giant of Africa uh, in, in the very near future. So I have great hope for the, for the country. And I'll keep on producing good works to capture the moment and to project uh, Nigeria. Hi, my name is uh, Anthony Ndikao, uh, Nigerian artist living in the UK. I've been here for about 10 years now. School at Nsuka. Okay. Um, the work. Like she mentioned those binary codes. Yes, that's what comes to mind, binary code, X, zeros and ones. Yeah, the whole theme of the exhibition was supposed to be 100 years of Nigerian um, being, a unit, being a unit as in Nigeria. So I figured, okay, initially I was going to write a lot of hundreds all the way. Okay, so and somehow I just said, okay, why don't you make it binary codes? Binary codes are zeros and ones, right? And it's what leads to the information technology we do have right now. There's endless possibilities of things that can come out of it, okay? So I look at Nigeria in that vein, too. The zeros and ones will represent the positives and negatives of us being amalgamated as one country. So, uh, but the title there is Trium. So I'm not looking at just those two. I'm looking at a base that keeps those two together, makes them existent. Just like if you're trying to, uh, say, here and there. And there's a space in between that makes it possible for you to say here and there. And once you recognize that space, that space becomes a here, and it keeps endlessly keep going up and down. So uh, the theme, the title being Trium, is recognition of that third element, which is a base on which the ones and twos are existence. That's the people of Nigeria. Now we're looking at the British experiment. The information technology, we call it Western technology, and what typifies the West as the English, the ones that colonized us, came to our country, took over our country and made us their subjects. So uh, we're looking at the experiment of writing up a binary code, having no clue what it's going to turn up. If someone were to take up this code as I've written it right now, as I've arranged it, and let's see if I'd probably come up with something, a new invention that nobody knows. You never know. Never know. 
I was thinking about the idea of binary code being existent because all the technology we have right now, back in around 75, 1975, I was alive and okay then, a lot of things did not seem possible, like the way mobile phones and a lot of things that we have right now, and they've been existent for some time. The way the leaps and bounds in which this technology, information technology has grown, if you check medical, uh, the breakthroughs they've had in medicine, the medical machines that do exist, even the other went to my bank and I was served by an automated uh, program that's telling me how to put my money in my bank and how to get my money. He was just doing everything, no human beings. So it's something that is it's limitless in its potential by the time you come to look at the examine it. So if Nigeria were to be looked at in terms of binary code, it's endless potential. We have lot of, loads of riches, human manpower, the riches of intellect, a lot of criminal minds too, <laughs> which is always generated by poverty. All of them build up into what we have as our country right now. Is the British experiment been a success? Is it they are making Nigeria one unit? Has it been a success? Only time will tell. We can probably think about it in maybe in about 100 years' time. We'll look and see what Nigeria has become because it's been regressing from when I was a young child. It's constantly been going downhill. And I wanted to talk a bit more about your this particular artwork that's called Triumph. Um, when I look at it, I see a juxtaposition of many things from the very primary simple medium of wood yep. to a very complicated binary code. And it also brings me back to thinking about those um, mats that we have at home that we can just throw out. Yeah, actually, it was a mat at some point because I was working on it to be able to assemble it. When I was assembling it here, I said, you're working on it? I said, yes, I'm working on it. It looks like a mat. Actually, it's the color of a mat. Uh, it's woven like this one's woven, although with wires, a bit pricky and got a lot of bleeding hands then when I was doing it. But uh, being an artwork, it's, it's, it's something I enjoy doing. It's a bit therapy because it took a long time to do it. How long, then, how long did it take? Upwards uh, of two and a half months. So and that's constantly sitting down at the table and weaving it and cutting each piece and polishing each piece and weaving it in. I later use the color scheme, which tends to represent Nigeria. Green, white, green. You see the gold there? The gold there represents our riches. The white in the sky and the blue and the purple represents our sea, the River Niger and River Benue that divides the country into three. Brilliant. <laughs> love, brilliant. There is a lot of um, brilliance and symbolism in just the wood and the binary code and a little bit of color that is in there. Thank you very much for your time and thank you for sharing your work with us. Hello, uh, my name is Ade Ogundemu. I love to introduce myself as a British born Nigerian. I'm a Nigerian first and then you can ask me where I was born. Right, I am a painter. I am an impressionist. A painter who paints, who sort of conquers his environment. I paint what I can see. And I like the viewers to see uh, space, color, texture, every natural thing. And that's the way I do it. Um, I'm a part of this organization called the Nigeria Art Society in the UK. One of the pioneer members. We've been around since 1992. But this is the first um, exhibition we're having on Nigeria, the amalgamation since 1914. There's been so many ups and downs in it, but it's been mostly downs though, from my own point of view. Um, I hope it gets better and we stay one. <laughs> okay, great. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about this piece that you call Cabal. Yeah. Okay. When I look at it, I see a lot of bondage. Okay. From the words written section to the, I'm not sure if that's a Bible or a diary, a constitution that has been bound and, and yes, and desecrated. Yeah. Could you tell me more about your mind frame when you painted this? Right. Uh, the Kabbal, that's the topic, that's the name of this painting. What does that mean? It's like a set of people hidden behind the scenes pulling the strings. Okay 
for their own selfish means, you know, they, they get everything for themselves and neglect the masses. It doesn't matter to them how poor anyone is as long as they get all the power, all the money and all the adoration. It's all theirs. Now, we had a head of state one in 2009-2010 called uh, Yara Dua. He was a sickly person, though many people say he was a good man, but he was sickly and always needed uh, liver, some to do with his liver and kidney and all, dialysis and everything, the works he needed. So he was always going abroad to get checked and sorted out. And each time he was living, he never left the vice president, who's the present president, in charge of anything. That's what we, the, the press was saying anyway. And this time he left the country for like three months. The whole country was on fire. Everyone was screaming, what's going on? Where's our president? Why isn't the vice president acting as the president? It's the um, cabal, his wife and their you know, organization pulling all the strings. Even signing the budget from his sick bed. Now, in the constitution, in our constitution, it takes care of that. That's the constitution down there, the 1999 constitution, in uh, section 144, 145, and 146. It caters for when the president leaves the country and who should be in charge. And if he leaves the country for more than 30 days, someone else should take over and stuff like that. But it was all, you know, thrown in the bin. They didn't go by that. And at the end of the day, it's all the desecration of our constitution. The whole country was on fire. There was confusion everywhere. Yeah, so I think I managed to capture that and depict it. And this is my own interpretation of that fiasco. <laughs> yeah. This is very interesting indeed. Um, so I see you, you have a little bit of um, interest in law and, um, and the rule of law and how it ought to be ought to be practiced. Could you tell me what you would like to see in Nigeria for the next hundred years in terms of our legal system and, um, and, the, and the powers that rule us? I would like to see the legal and independent legal system. Right now, the legal system, the whole of them just work for the presidency, mostly. He dictates or the presidency dictates what they want. The presidency will never lose a case. All his cronies will never lose any case. They will never get arrested, even in the face of blatant uh, uh, evidence of corruption. They won't get charged, they won't get arrested. There's an um, organization called the EFCC. I, I don't know, they just go after the poor little, little Yahoo, they call them Yahoo boys, the internet fraudsters. They concentrate on those ones. The, and, uh, the money those guys still, it's not even from the country, it's from abroad. So why can't we take care of our own country before we start looking about trying, trying to, you know, sort people abroad out? They don't do that to us, they don't care about us, they care about the country, not our country. Yeah? And the, the, the president and his cronies don't lose sleep over this. So I would like to see a very, very independent judiciary in Nigeria to be able to you know, bring justice the way it's supposed to be, with no fear or favor. I've heard a lot of um, tonight from all your, from your fellow col um, colleagues and things like that as to how the different things that they would like to see. How would we get? How would we even start with an independent judiciary? First, well, if I were the president, the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is flush out all the top Etoclon now, that are in there right now, and promote the underlings up. Well, I don't think we would miss the top guys, because all the experience they have is about corruption. They've, they've sort of, you know, let it go down to the junior ones, but the junior ones are not as bad as they are. So I'll get rid of them first, and then move the new set up. Thank you very much, Ade, for your time. And thank you so much for sharing your inspiration with us. I'm Lara Igejat, a painter and printmaker. Could you tell me a little bit about your work and the inspiration behind it? 
Uh, the, this particular work is uh, titled Trapped, and um, it depicts the uh, Chibok girls that were abducted in Nigeria. And um, I believe this is one of the most pressing issues of our time. So I'm using this uh, format to record it and also to know why they're still there. And today marks the 168th days that they have been there. And uh, it's a shame that we're celebrating 100 years and these girls are still there. And one would think, uh, could this really happen in Nigeria? Is it really happening in Nigeria? So um, I've, the, the work is on, because the, the, the reason why they have been adopted is known as a uh, Western education. I, I have the background, the letters in the background and the figures and the um, alphabet depict the Western education. And when we say Western education, one will want to pause and think, even the firearms they're using is from the Western world. So where do we, um, where does this meet? Don't, do, don't they think um, something is wrong somewhere to think because of Western education they need to be kept away and they're still there. So it's a shame and I feel a lot for the parents of these uh, girls. They must be going through a harrowing period. So I just feel I need to record this for prosperity. I see you use a lot of bold colors, the red, the violets, turquoise. Were there any particular reasons for your choice of colors? Yes, um, the, the, the blues is to depict the mood, the gloomy mood. And the bright in the background, you can see there is like a sunlight in the background. This is like a hope because one will still think and uh, hope for these children. So I hope for a uh, brighter tomorrow for them. And the, uh, the, the bright colors within the letters depicts um, a bright future for these children. And uh, they have been taken away, they have been caught from this brighter future. So but I've put the background to bring a hope for this uh, children. Yeah, my name is uh, Imoesi Imonige, a graduate of Federal Polytechnic, Aochi, and a major in painting. Yeah, this is one of my pieces in the exhibition. The title is The Last Tree. Yeah. Uh, if you look at like, the title, at the, the title, the Nigeria Experience, transform, uh, transform, transforming the experience, the British experience, for these hundred years. Uh, if you look at this work, it's a tray that leads from Lagos to Augustate, Ijoko, and from Ijoko to Lagos every day. If you look at the work, you see the tough terrain, the doggedness of the, of the environment. Our people have to wake up early in the morning as from four o'clock, five o'clock, to catch up with the six o'clock tray, tray and the seven o'clock tray. If you look at it, it talk about the, the kind of government that rule Nigeria. The way the government try it's not that Nigeria is a lawless environment. That's why you see people on top of the tree and people trying to struggle to get in. No, because of the people are aspiring for the better tomorrow, a better future. That's part the the the, 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 the we don't have in enough uh, transportation, people struggle to get to the trade, to go to work. They are aspiring for a better tomorrow. But the government are trying to, they are subduing the, the common Nigerians, but the Nigerians are still struggling to get to where, where they want to be. That is what the work is talking about. After all these years, this is the way Nigeria is. There is no improvement. Is the trade that, the, that our colonial master left for us. That is what we are still using. Like in a day, you have two trades that run in the morning, the six o'clock tray, the seven o'clock tray, and in the evening, you have the four o'clock tray and the six o'clock tray. So that is why you, the work is the last tray. You have to struggle to get in there. And in, the, in that your struggle, there's people, you have a lot, of, a lot of things are happening, but you have to struggle to get to work, to make, the, to make your day, 
a living, uh, to make a living out of it, out of the situation that the government have created for the citizens of the country. That is what I'm saying with the work. It's a very beautiful piece. Um, do you pre predominantly paint with oils? Yeah, yeah, I paint with oil. All my works are oil, oil covers. I paint with pallet knife. It, I can definitely see the, the, the rush of the people getting in and out. Um, so, from what you've been saying, you've been talking a lot of that about the infrastructure of Nigeria, that we're still using the same trains that our colonial masters left for us. What would you like to see in terms of um, transportation and a better life for Nigerians in the next hundred years? Yeah, like presently in Lagos, <coughs> The present governor is doing well. Like we have the BRT now, transport. But what they are, the effort they are putting is not enough. If you if you live in, in, in London, you see the mode of transportation. Everything is in the north because the government are, are able to cater for the entire uh, people in London. But Nigeria, we don't have that for now. But I know. The, some of the governors are trying, but we still have to do more. Understand? Because Nigeria people, we are strong. We are willing to work. We are dedicated to what we are doing, but the government are not helping us. We need, to, we need more from them. Nigeria is blessed with natural resources that we have everything that it takes to be a better country. So that is what I'm saying. We need a better country. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, my name is Michael Echekoba. I'm one of the 14 artists exhibiting today um, in, some, in commemoration of Nigeria at 100. Um, today um, coincides with Nigerian independence as well as um, 100 years of uh, southern and northern amalgamation of the protectorate of Nigeria. Hence, the title, uh, Nigeria at 100 Transcending British Experiment. Um, my art, originally, I started painting, and when I came back in the country to, to the UK, my birthplace, um, Nigeria was going through a bad press. And so I used to do very observational, celebrative, uh, trying to depict our positive and vibrant side of our lives. But over 20 something years, probably older, and I'm beginning to question issues politically, religiously, and otherwise going on in our country, Nigeria. Now, the team, which uh, I've earlier said is Nigeria at 100 uh, Transforming British Experiment, I've addressed it from an abstract point of view, which is. Um, uh, conceptual symbolism uh, using symbols to depict uh, a metaphor of um, the experience from religious point of view, religious and the perception of what um, the British colonial masters perceived to be um, a superior uh, religion or way of life to a system that already had a structural, a political, and organizational structure in place. To them, it sounded dysfunctional, but to us, it was working. Um, I.e., the term uh, traditional religious belief has been a paganist way of worship uh, in, contrast, in contrast to what they perceive to be a superior uh, Christian faith. Uh, my, my idea is not to question people's belief, but my idea and what I try to depict in my painting is to question the, the uh, introduction, the concept of a religion from Western point of view and to equally challenge and equally bring pe to people's consciousness what exactly is this religion, how superior is it to the religion that we had prior to British people coming, you know? Therefore, I want people to sit back and find a way to have a personal thoughts. 
towards their belief. I am a Christian, by the way, but I don't buy everything that is sold to me. Even as much as um, I've done this, um, interpreted the painting via a Christian uh, perspective, the, my question, my idea is not to question people's belief. My idea is to highlight the fundamental um, introduction of Christianity and the fact that the, the superior mindset from which uh, the, 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 the religion was introduced to us and the way we perceive it and the way we've held it up to date and the way Christianity has almost um, become a yastic for everything, yet we are still one of the most corrupt uh, nation in the world. And this corruption did not start with na just Nigerians. It was a system that was transferred to us by colonial exploitation. You know, so that is the idea behind this. Also, I've used equally, I've um, equally brought in the, the hand, which is the exploitative part of it, which is still ongoing, ongoing. And now we are not just guilt the, the, the after effects of the colonization, which is primary to extort the former colonies, is still ongoing. And the worst side is that we are now beginning to collaborate with them to perpetuate the extortion by way of our leaders trying to stash their money to already wealthy Western worlds. Thank you very much for that. When I, when I see this particular piece, the engulfment, I see two things that come to mind. I mean, you have really pushed through the religious aspect of God and Mormon here. And um, uh, like I was telling you just now, you know, the two things you never mess with a Nigerian about is his money and his God. Yeah. So um, was there a particular reason why you went for a brighter color like yellow and not maybe something darker and more sinister? Um, I, didn't, I wanted to, um, as much as we, we seem to be a fragmented country, um, I believe there is strength in diversity. Um, I don't know if it's an optimistic view, uh, but being a, a byproduct of uh, a federal government college, I've seen a uh, multi-tribal relationship. Relationship as in, I think one of the biggest problem we have is mistrust. I don't know if I'm naive, but I'd rather be naive and think this way and believe that we are stronger as a united uh, Nigeria than a fragmented Nigeria. Of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, as much as we're going through a very difficult patch with the Boko Haram issue, therefore a lot of people might begin to question um, the, uh, the, 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 the sense, the rationale behind the country being together. But we have to go through different phases. But the most important thing is what are we learning as we're going through these phases? It's sad because I'm not sure we're learning much. Uh, that's my honest opinion. But if we are able to come out on the other side, I think we are stronger as a united uh, country than, in other words, the, the, hence the question of why didn't I use a somber kind of color. Nigeria is a colorful country. Nigeria is a rich country. Nigeria is a blessed country. The question is, how are we managing these abundant resources? You know, so that's, that's why I've used, and one of the attractions that the West still see in sunny countries are the colors, the sunshine, the vibrancy, and not the subdued kind of uh, monotonous kind of lifestyle that they're having in their country, hence the bright colors. Thank you very much for that. So, um, hi, my name is Helena Foster, and I'm standing here today with Gwenga Orimo Loye, who will be talking to us about this painting. Um, so, Gwenga, actually, this is one of my favorite paintings uh, in this particular exhibition. It's oh, my favorite. Well. Great. So, uh, can you just talk to us a little bit about the work and in terms of the theme of this particular exhibition, celebrating Nigeria at 100, but not in terms of the actual 
date of our independence, as it is our independence today as well, but looking at um, Nigeria in terms of the amalgamation of the North and South, um, I mean, when Nigeria came together in 1914. Yeah. But uh, yeah, can you just elaborate on that and talk to us a bit about your work? Okay, well, um, my work is um, uh, an expression of post-British um, influence in Nigeria. Uh, not directly, but it's, it's part of, I would say, uh, part of the results of, if you like, um, the experiments, the British experiments in Nigeria, creating a country and, you know, as you said, an amalgamation of northern and southern, and in fact, several hundreds of different languages, I mean, the, the, the different groups of people who speak absolutely different languages. Um, the, 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 the present time, um, we, we artists have been able to create, um, have been able to marry different aspects of uh, culture, of expression, of um, uh, sources of uh, topic and, and themes. And why I say that is that um, an artist such as myself, for example, I've been able to use a Western kind of uh, method or approach of art, which is uh, the discipline of painting, using oil paints and um, linseed oil and artist white spirits and turpentines, which my ancestors, the artists in, in the parts of the world where I come from, wouldn't have used. I mean, uh, I've been able to use these um, tools or this medium to um, create images that reflect my culture or my upbringing and um, I've been able to bring, uh, in a sense, I see it as being a marriage of the legacy of uh, Western nations such as Britain and infused with the uh, um, iconic relevance and iconic images from my background and from a, a place like Nigeria and Africa generally. So what I get from that is you're really interested in painting yes. in terms of the, you know, the fact that you pick on the fact that you know it's something that is very English thin I mean that's where that British aspect comes into it and of course you're kind of marrying it with the kind of traditions in terms of your imagery and your choice of image you've chose to kind of portray women here um, who look very much like your typical traditional attire where they've got the, the big igele on and the, the coral beads and the kind of big I, I'm not sure what that is I don't want to call it Agbada because I know I know that is for the men not the women um, but it's interesting here because I think there's something very subtle and nice about your palette that you've chosen here it's very kind of you've got really nice subtle blues mixed with the greys and whites and I just wondered in terms of your choice of colors um, how do you kind of decide what colors kind of go with what mood you're trying to create within your work yes uh, that's a very good question. I'm very um, spontaneous every now and again when I do my painting. Sometimes I actually plan the colors or the paints. Uh, I mean, well, the, the tones and the colors I use. Um, in this particular instance, I didn't really plan the color. Um, actually, there was another painting that I had started to create, and sometimes I'm not very happy with my own works. I mean, that, this thankfully doesn't happen too many times, but it does happen every now and again. Um, so I wasn't very pleased with the painting, and so I scraped all of the paint and sort of, you know, had a very huge dollop because as you can see I use a lot of paint when I you, when I create my pieces um, you would see it has a lot of texture and you know there's a lot of paint swashing all, around all over the place so what I've done is I've mixed all the colors and it's been able to give me this tertiary color because the colors tend to break each other when you mix them all together. You have primary colors, secondary colors, and you've just sort of mixed everything together. And in this case, I'm trying to sort of economize the, the, the fact I, did, I didn't want to throw away huge quantities of paint. So I find that I'm able to, perhaps due to the uh, amount of work that I've done over the years, getting to know my own technique, my own style, my own medium, the way the oil paint behaves. I, I've concentrated a lot more on oil paint, so I kind of am very used to the way it behaves. So I'm able to mix the colors together and come up with 
things that I did not necessarily intend to create. And then as I move the paint around on the surface of the canvas or on the board, then I start to see forms and things that sort of work. It's, it's really always, uh, well not always, but most times about a feeling as opposed to a choice of color or a choice of uh, you know image or choice of a pose or whatever it is it's a feeling and once that feeling is there you just sort of know when to stop because if you don't you get to a point where you go beyond it and then everything you do after that point starts yeah it starts to actually take away yeah so Yes, yeah. and then you actually say to yourself, like I've experienced once, once yeah. in a while, it's like, oh, I should have stopped at such and such a time, because now the painting looked better an hour ago than it looks now. So I think for every artist, and I suppose in my case as well, I think the, the, the thing is working out when to stop and when to walk away from the painting. And um, this painting is a typical example of the process I described. And I think it sort of worked in this case because I didn't really plan it um, the way it has turned out. But at the same time, I had some sort of forms in my mind. And a lot of my images are things that I've thought about. And um, even though I didn't sketch them, like in this particular painting, I didn't sketch these forms. I just created them. Yes, because they've, all, they've always been in my heart. So I can just translate it and put it down. And as soon as I put it down, I'm able to compare it with what I saw in my heart. And when it works, I realize I need to stop. And that's how it goes. So now, just last question. Um, so I'm looking at this painting. Yeah. And interestingly enough, all the women are kind of positioned facing. Yes, they're in profile. In a forward, yeah, profile yes. views. Yeah. So Nigeria, today our independence. Yes. Nigeria, celebrating um, 100 years. Yes. British experiment. Yes. Where do you see us looking? Are we heading in the forward right direction? I would like to believe that we're heading in the forward and the right direction. Uh, these ladies have this upright yeah. kind of stance about that. Yes, I believe they do. And I think metaphorically speaking they do, which is why I have um, them feature in a lot of my paintings anyway. They're metaphorical. Um, they represent strength, they represent dignity, they represent elegance. And that's why I sort of tend to dress them the way I usually do. And sometimes I exaggerate some aspects of their costume, like the gele. I mean, it's a bit safe in this one, but there are some of my pieces that the gele is actually almost as big <laughs> as the person that's wearing it. <laughs> because, you know, I'm trying to make a statement that these women look very regal and they look very confident. And each one of them is, in a, is an instance of what we believe our nation or our people should be like. So we have something good you know, f that, that is of us that we need to celebrate and we need to project to the better part of ourselves. So I would like to believe they're looking forward and they're all bright. Wenger, here we are at your second piece which you're exhibiting in this show. Um, so this is a slightly different painting and it's got a different feel and energy to it. Yes. It's very vibrant, the colours are more loud, yes. especially with this woman in, who's at the forefront of the painting. She's yes. in red, which is like, you yes. know, alarm! Yes. <laughs> I mean, at, at the same time, um, there's so much movement in this as well. And can you maybe just talk to us a bit about what the difference is between the previous painting and this one as well. Okay, so in this one, um, what I've tried to do is to, um, as you said, create a little bit more energy. Um, the red is very deliberate um, to try to give the figure some advancement. So it's like that's where your eyes go to straight away. And in this particular piece, she's dancing. So the dance... Uh, means a lot. There are volumes and there are layers of meaning in the dance. And um, as we discussed in the other piece where we said the women were looking forward, in this one she's one of the women is dancing and that tells us that um, we, are, we are going through a, a, a situations that despite, I mean, or despite what we go through, we are still able to celebrate, we are still able to dance, we are still able to uh, enjoy life exactly um, and again beyond just the natural meaning we have the metaphorical meaning as well so we are looking at a situation where the country will have an attitude of this celebration uh, an attitude of celebration about it 
despite all the challenges that we face, be it bad governance, be it um, leadership that is insensitive to the people, whatever it is, you know, we, we, it's, it's signifying hope and it's signifying a, a better uh, situation and position for all of us. Uh, we're here with Titus Agbara here this evening at the um, opening of the Nigeria at 100 exhibition. Um, can you please tell us a little bit about your painting? I've noticed you're probably the only artist in the show who's painting um, landscape, uh, who's making landscape paintings here. Yes. And I'm a landscape painter. I do a lot of landscapes, yeah, but actually there's still some tendency to portraiture and figures in my in my work, which I intend doing for now. Yeah, move away a little bit from the landscapes because uh, yeah, people find it difficult to relate with what's going on in Africa when they see the type of landscape I used to paint because I, I'm, I'm in love with way back 60s, 70s, how we used to be, how I started growing up, not, in, not something that has been deformed with the present day technology. Yeah, that takes me back to my past. Now that's interesting because in a way this painting summarizes a bit of both of those things you just talked about in terms of um, figurative of portraits and kind of landscape. Because within this, what I just noticed a second ago, I can see some sort of figures within the background of this painting. And then we then have in the foreground the kind of lovely flowers as well. Um, so where is this imagery from? Is it, do you imagine this? Is it from an image, um, an actual photograph? Or, and if so, where is, what part of the world is this? <laughs> it's not really, it's just an imagination. The artist's own interpretation of how I portray Nigeria to be in the next hundred years to come. You know what's going on in Africa today? There are some kind of a religious and political uh, crisis everywhere and a lot of things have happened. Cause death of our people, the land, the, the, the uh, environment is no more suitable for us to live. But I'm projecting Africa. Not not uh, not uh, relating it to just using uh, Nigeria as uh, as a contest. How it will be like in the next hundred years to come. So is it safe to say you're an environmentalist as well? In terms of like, are you for the land should be green and we should all uh, recycle it's, it's, it? Yet, it's it's how God created it to be from the creation, but man has destroyed its uh, ecosystem. And now we are, we are, we are, there's so a lot of uh, diseases or whatever, so a lot of outbreaks suddenly, which we never expect, because we have destroyed the, the, what, what, what uh, the land has been meant for from the beginning. Now, I'm projecting it that we, we just have to recreate it, go back to the past, revisit it, revisit it again, and try to make it the way it is from the past, and we could live a very peaceful life again. So when we talk about the past, so what is your vision of terms of your memory of Nigeria in the past? Are you looking at it from, I don't know, do you live now in London um, or? No, uh, says the good old days. So what is the good old days? Because I mean... The good old days, yeah, okay, during my time, I'll say the uh, good old days. When I have kids, my kids will say also the good old days. So definitely there's no bad days. We're still living in the same frequency or the same sequence. Yeah, even my own forefather said the good old days. I said, what? He said, now it's not good. But in my time, too, I'll say the good old days, that now it's not good to my kids. So that, that, that is to say, there's no bad days, but however, we still have to keep whatever experience you have within now, and you figure it out what's going on before, we still have to make everything work flow, we still have to flow with the, with the happenstance and how it's going on to be. That's how I just look at it, at life in general. So did these particular flowers in this painting mean anything to you? Yeah, it's, it's the, the, this painting itself, it's just symbolic. Yeah, it's a representation of the trees as human figures. You can see some faces and they, they are not just standing on their own, but they are together, living together. That's why I titled it Families. The uh, families is not only now, the families we are looking beyond. Those that have gone before us and those that are still going to come after us also. So it's like we, I'm trying to 
unites everybody together. And, and that unity will also create that vibrancy in us. If there's no unity, then there's war. And if there's war, the land will not be good for everybody to live in. So the painting is all about uniting us, projecting us for the future. And when the land is green and there's a beautiful flowers, then we'll all live a happy life on the earth. That's a very beautiful way of looking at it. Um, I mean, in terms of we have this, and what's interesting actually, and what I pick up from this show, it's everyone has this idea of really wanting the best for Nigeria and really wants it to kind of progress and move forward. Um, and in terms of your work, you've kind of done that with this idea of this green, luscious, you know, painting full of like beautiful flowers and leaves that are very alive. And, you know, and in, in a way that's, that's kind of sim symbolic towards what you want in terms of a greener Nigeria, a better Nigeria. And, and that is beautiful. Uh, that, you know, everyone, everyone's got a very positive uh, message. <laughs> so I hope our, hope our Nigerian leaders are, are paying attention to this. <laughs> because everyone, everyone is behind uh, Nigeria and I guess everyone wants it to do well. And um, yeah, but this is great. Nigeria is a very great nation anyway. And we are bound to uh, do well. And we are bound to, uh, to, uh, pro, to uh, pro, progress in every endeavor in our lives. So definitely. It's just that the, I would say, our leaders, our, it's our leaders, whosoever is leading us, it's not, it's not really carrying the whole nation along, and that's where the problem lies. Can we talk about your next painting? Because I, I think it's a slightly different from this style. So here we are looking at a painting, which is one of yours as well. Yes. Um, looks to me slightly different. In turn, the landscape is still there, but in this time you've included very realistic you know, figures in it, which are very figurative. Um, and I kind of get the sense of a kind of northern feel to it. Uh, so you can just expand on that and tell us uh, what the inspiration behind this painting is. Okay, the, the painting itself, I titled it uh, There Is A River. It still boils down to the title we have in the a exhibition, Looking at Ni Nigeria in the Next 100 Years. The uh, landscape here is still taking us back to the way we used to live. Bef with, uh, differ from uh, the uh, Western civilization. And uh, the uh, figure you, can s you see in the painting, they're moving out. They're going towards a certain place. Yeah, and uh, I titled it, There is a River, because when I say there, there is a river, the title of the exhibition is like transforming the British experiment. What is the British experiment? Uh, what it's, it's, it's about? It's like during during the time of the uh, colonial masters, it's what they've they've uh, they've, they've uh, brought to us and and uh, they've uh, indoctrinated us with. That's what we we are following and we are living by it. But I try to uh, rep to uh, represent it on the cloud here. If you look at the the, the way the the, the uh, formation of the clouds, like the uh, river Thames. Yeah, I just take it from that side, there is a river. And during the ancient time, if God wants to lead his people, he do lead them with the signs from the top, which either with a pillar of cloud or with a pillar of fire. So there is a river which the people living in this, in this, in this part of the world are moving to. And what the Bible, it's a, it's a kind of a religious feeling that I have in the painting. What the uh, Bible say when, when, uh, when it says there is a river? Uh, I will take us down to Psalm chapter 46 that says, oh, uh, it said that, okay, there is a uh, river, a stream, where glad shall make the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. That's, there is a river in this painting, meaning there is something ahead of us which they are moving up to, which is better. A glorious ending and it's well interpreted in that my former painting where you can see the flowers blossoming and everything and stuff like that so this is like an extension to the other bigger piece which I've just explained to you that's why I said there is a river definitely I'm moving to the river and when they go to the river it gives, yeah, it gives wow 
painting. Wow, <laughs> that's interesting when you're talking about a, a Bible quote and looking to that, and we're referring to the Northerners, which are usually uh, Muslims, uh, for example. But not that, that it's a bad thing, I'm not saying that's wrong. Um, but also it's interesting because, you know, as you said, they're all moving, you know, they've got their, um, I can see like some people are carrying a bit of, um, I don't know, their possessions and them and their cattle. And they're heading kind of outwards, away from the ta well, yeah, the, yeah. the houses and the little huts, and and that's interesting because it's almost like they're on a journey towards something somewhere. They might not know where. They just and in a way, that's the lifestyle of the the northerners. They, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it definitely tends towards moving towards the uh, riverside, and yet the uh, river is very scarce. It's a very scarce uh, commodity when it comes to places in the far away north. So it's almost yeah. like they're they're on a on a journey where they don't know where they're heading to, they don't know whether they find that water or they don't know where There is a river. If they look up to the cloud, that's ah. the formation of the river Thames. And that's where, that's, that's where the uh, guidance comes in. So definitely they know where they are heading to. Great. So they need to kind of connect with the, with the guidance with of the, the guidance clouds, of the cloud. which will lead them to the journey, the destination, which will then end up being <laughs> in the other painting, which we looked at in the first yeah, place. Yeah, which yeah, is that yeah. place already Perfect harmony, love, everything. unity, <laughs> progress. And stuff so, like that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Thanks. My name is Chike Azonye. Um, yeah, as you know, I'm a member of the um, Niger Nigeria Art Society UK. And uh, this is our second exhibition. And here I have uh, one of my paintings, uh, which I call the, um, the Gathering. So just tell me a little bit more about the gathering. How, how did this painting come about and what, uh, in terms of the colors, I can see there's different kind of elements and aspects to it in terms of the shapes and the colors and I'd like to know how you come to that decision while you paint. Well, um, as you can see, this is, um, I was, um, I don't know whether to use the word the cult of ancestors, but um, from where I come from, we believe in, um, in uh, reincarnation. And what I've done here is to, is to relate that to my painting, to, to show the two worlds, the, as, I, the, as they say, the as above, so below. So what I've done is to um, relate to the, uh, the upper world and the lower world. Um, here you have uh, images that suggest our terrestrial um, as, um, aspects. And here you, we have the... Um, the higher aspect of um, life and, um, and some images that represent the ancestral spirits and here you have um, uh, like a, a pregnancy uh, like a, a pregnant woman uh, with um, a fetus um, about to give birth to, 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 to a being and, and that's what I'm trying to do here um, so if you look at the painting, you see that we have the um, the sun, uh, that also the the the, um, the unborn child, which um, uh, a form of rebirth. Uh, that is what I'm trying to exhibit in this whole uh, sphere, and then that um, that manifests down to the um, to the terrestrial level, uh, symbolized by this um, by this here. Um, and the same applies to this aspect of the painting as well, because it's, these are all uh, terrestrial um, levels. So it's, it's, it's very, very symbolic, and, um, and borrows from the, the, um, the belief in, um, in, in our, my village, from where I come from, that is Sukwato in, um, in Abia State, where we have... Um, this belief in a reincarnation. I think it goes across all Igbo, Igbo land that people reincarnate into their families, back into their families. And um, I have symbolically represented that here in this painting. So I'm really fascinated by that because in a way, are you referring to a particular family here or you, your family, for example? Because, okay. or because I kind of get the sense of when I'm thinking of reincarnation, for example, because um, the idea which you've got here is you've got this um, the kind of ancestral world up here and the, yeah. you know, and the underworld down here. And you've got this pregnant woman with the fetus and she gives birth, which we end up being 
shots yeah, yeah. are back into real, yeah, you know, it's, life it's, here. It's like a so circle. it's a continuous circle. Yeah, it's it is. Continuous circle. Um, it's a continuous circle. So I just wondered if this was maybe referring to your personal family um, heritage. Not, not, not necessarily, because not necessarily because this is something that happens in the Holy Boland or or maybe the whole um, uh, some aspects of um, some areas in um, in Africa. But what I'm trying to do here is to also um, re relate it to Nigeria, where we have different ethnic groups trying to, to coexist. Uh, it hasn't been easy. It has been very, very difficult to coexist as a, as a people uh, called Nigeria, uh, which borrows from the theme of this exhibition. And this is what I'm trying to, um, to relate to this, um, to, 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 to this show. And uh, as you can see, uh, I've um, applied some aspect of Uli, which is um, the, symbol, the, sim the symbol or the motif of the Igbo people of, Ni of Eastern Nigeria. You can see the Isimwoji here. Yes, that is when you break the collar knot. The four pieces of the collar knot are here, there, and there, four of them. And they also represent the four market days, Eke, Orie, Unkwo, and um, is it? Oh yeah, four of them. Yeah. Now, when when uh, you uh, because in Igbo land we don't have seven 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 uh, we don't have um, a seven days week. Yeah, we have we have four market days, and that's what I'm trying to represent here, the four market days of uh, of the week of the Igbo um, uh, calendar. And and um, and I've tried to 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 um, to symbolically represent both the higher and the lower worlds. As, um, as they manifest in, in, in our lives. And, um, and, and to, to kind of render the work in a very, very stylistic way. So um, uh, if, you, if you look at it, they look at like castles, but they are not. They are, they are, human, they are, they are, they are people, but, but they, are, they are kind of rendered in a very symbolic way. So all I've done here is to make sure that the works are symbolically represented. And, um, and to convey a meaning. And that's, that's the meaning uh, I have given to this painting. That's why I called it the, the gathering. Yeah. So, so it's like a gathering of uh, all the different aspects. Aspects, as you, of, yeah, aspects yeah. of the ancestral uh, lineage and the gathering of the whole of um, uh, uh, the whole aspects that make up the country in Nigeria. Yes. Yeah, so we are celebrating the... Uh, Amalgamation of uh, Nigeria. Yes, I, I, I could safely say that this is this is uh, Yoruba people, okay. Hausa people, Bender people, Igbo people. Why are you I could, the uh, biggest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you could say you could, you, could, you, could, you could reverse it actually. You could yeah. say say what, it is, but I'm just I'm saying that these are uh, diverse people yeah. coming together to form a country, um, but they are struggling. They are struggling because um, they they are from different. Um, they had different languages. We, we have more than 200 um, languages in Nigeria, and uh, uh, without English and um, uh, Pidgin English, we'll be lost because we won't, be, we won't understand what people are saying because we're all speaking different languages. So uh, in that light, uh, th those are some of the challenges which we have overcome in this 100 years of existence. And um, I'm happy that in this exhibition now we have 14 artists from different um, uh, uh, ethnic, ethnic uh, uh, backgrounds in Nigeria coming together as friends to, to have this wonderful exhibition today in London. So do you think maybe at a point when Nigeria gets to uh, find it's a perfect balance, and if you were to repaint this painting when that time comes, do you think maybe all the different uh, sides, if you refer to this as the Northerners and the Igbos, would there be like a perfect... Uh, Yes. Balance to it. They're, they're, well, the 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 point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I could still use this symbol, but I was use it in a different way to say that there's a union, a cohesion, of 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 these people coming together as one people. Yes. I'm not saying that Nigeria is not one people, but there are still differences. Uh, there there are some some issues that are still to be to be um to be answered. Uh, there are issues. Stemming back from the civil war that is not, still not answered, the Biafra Nigeria civil war. There are issues um, of um, ethnicity, uh, uh, the Yorubas and the Igbos, the Aosas and etc. that still uh, uh, needs to be uh, resolved so that we begin to work together as a nation. Because 
a divided house means that they cannot have progress. So we have to come together as a people to begin to build our nation. My name is Hassan Aliu. I am I'm a painter. I studied at ABU Zaria. I graduated in 1986 and received the Nigerian Art Council Prize for Best Final Year Student in Fine Art in my year of graduation. I am an avid, committed artist. I am one of the first generation of Nigerian artists who took to full-time studio practice upon graduation. Uh, at the time in 1986, the scene was much different from what it is today. Um, we eked out a living, myself and a lot of my colleagues, and we sort of brought around the fanfare and the, and the fashion of art exhibition attendance and art collecting in Nigeria back in the uh, mid to late 80s. And um, I came to England upon invitation by Emmanuel Jagede to come and participate in an exhibition with him. At the time, I just had a couple of exhibitions in Lagos which ran concurrently. Uh, one of them was with Joe Musa um, at the National Museum in Lagos. And at the same time, I had another show which was a quartet at the National Gallery of Craft and Design in Lagos. Um, my last show, however, in Lagos was the commemoration of Glasnost and Perestroika. And hence, uh, this was the opening of cultural exchanges uh, by the Russian government who opened the cultural center in Lagos. So I was the first artist to exhibit there and the exhibition was attended by 13 ambassadors, two national ministers, uh, you know, ministers of the Nigerian government. Um, coming to London for me was a... a um, what I felt I needed at the time in my career, I needed to expand to uh, outside of Nigeria. Given the arts in Nigeria then was quite limited, and in fact we'd sown the seeds to what's such a great, wonderful, vibrant scene today. Uh, but coming to London for me was an adventure in self-rediscovery, having been born in London 25 years before. Coming to London as a 25-year-old artist, self-employed as an artist for very, very many years, um, it, so the experience of coming to London provided for me food for all the work I was subsequently to do and work I'm doing today still which deals with the black identity. The black identity is important to me because back in the early 90s in London it's so much more different now that we've got the internet and globalization which have allowed a lot of cross-pollination of cultures and a lot of um, multiculturalism as a result has evolved in the UK. But back then in 1990, it was, it, you as a black artist felt sort of completely outside of the periphery, outside on the periphery uh, of the mainstream art scene in the UK. And so it was a struggle for me, both as an artist as well as a black in, person in the UK, dealing with the um, questions of racism. Um, what brought me to UK is not unusual to what brought other people who today live in the diaspora to the UK. Um, the UK, Britain, uh, colonized most of the world. And at one stage, Britain ruled the world, ruled the waves, ruled the lands, right? And um, basically, the colonization of half of the world by Britain meant that we felt certain sort of colonial affinities to coming back here. And as such, my parents came to study here in the 50s, and so I was born here. So um, the black identity issues and questions for me is today I've got my family living here and I've got uh, children who need to have a frame of reference, who need to know that once upon a time before the contact with the West, before a hundred years ago, before the centenary, the amalgamation of Nigeria, that they had a grand kingdoms of their own. They had their own sense of divinity and nobility. A lot of which... Um, people who haven't had the experience or pa children who haven't had the benefit of having had a parent such as me to introduce them to first hand um, will not know and then he hence will be deficient of that experience. Um, Nigeria was amalgamated a hundred years ago by Britain um, not because it was in the best interest of Nigeria to be amalgamated. As a matter of fact, Nigeria was bought from the Royal Niger Company for a few thousand pounds sterling at the time. For a few thousand pounds, it was bought from the Royal Niger Company by the British government, right? And the whole reason why Nigeria, Nigeria was a company, effectively. Nigeria was set up as a company to produce um, primary products and raw material for British industries, and also to be a consumer of 
the uh, offshoot of the rejected, the inferior goods produced in Britain it had to be sent somewhere to be disposed of for money-making purposes. So, and then the British colonial policy was one of divide and rule. So effectively, um, a whole people were sort of cut off from their, um, their mainland communities and effectively created into islands and then merged into this whole sort of hegemony which became Nigeria where um, divide and rule, the implications of divide and rule are such that um, while the people are warring amongst themselves, the uh, colonial power or the master has uh, nobody to challenge their status quo effectively so colonialism can perpetuate it itself for the next eternity, if you like. So, um, yeah, so my painting here specifically deals with the issues of the loss of identity as a result of the absorption or the observance of a foreign spirituality. And it's the, absor the observance of a foreign spirituality that is the basis of, of the conflicts that we see, the religious conflicts, which is one of the most significant set of events happening in Nigeria today. Everybody internationally, globally knows about the Boko Haram uh, question, and this directly is akin to that. So I've taken here a um, black symbol of light, a black symbol of hope. He, I call him a black symbol of hope only because he's a black person. Being Man Nelson Mandela. Indeed, yes. But is beyond a black icon. He's a global icon, as we know now. He's a global icon of the struggle which became his life. The struggle to project uh, for equality and, and to project the grandeur of his race, right? To be uh, regarded, you know. And so here, I've juxtaposed that... Um, 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 figure of light, right, um, against the figure of light, who 2,000 years before him was crucified on the cross and was also incarcerated. So hence the bars that you see there are bars of incarceration such as the dark bars you have there. But then there's a light which has been transmitted through that figure into the angelic figure. The figure of the angel is uh, bearing on their hand the figure, the symbol of the lantern, which for me I have used because the lantern is the most popular sort of means of lighting your house in Nigeria today. So I've repeated the symbol of the lantern, but I've also got the symbol of the trumpet. And the symbol of the trumpet is, uh, symbolizes for me enchantment. And I've used certain spiritual um, and uh, religious sort of um, iconography on pillars of religion and the various faiths where I'm trying to project the foreignness of these faiths. Um, this is not originated from any of our indigenous religious practices and hence uh, the conflicts and the dynamics of these religions has created a divide rather than a unifying factor amongst our people. Yet this exhibition is predominated by Nigerian artists from um, various parts of Nigeria. So the tenacity of my people is the reason why the experiment which was made to or intended to and destined to make us fail as a people who would be continually worrying has gone wrong obviously here because in this exhibition there's people from various parts of Nigeria who are showing their work unified in one purpose and that purpose to show that we are better than has been projected out there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I also wanted to ask you, I see this little corner here that looks like an artist's palette. Well, um, could you explain a bit more there? Yes, indeed it is. Um, in my affluent present day, I um, have a lot of paints um, to waste. So very often times, my paints dry on my palette. And what happens, I don't go scraping it off, I just throw it away because my palette is cheap plexiglass anyway, yeah? So I threw it away rather than scrape them because I can't recycle them. But it just occurred to me, this picture is made of found materials. There's no paint work here. The only paint in this painting is that. So basically, the, sorry, the only paint in this artwork, I dare say it's a painting because it's an artwork. So the only paint in this artwork is that. Everything else is made from found recycled material. Um, I used to play the lottery, I still do. I've never won anything significant. 
So therefore, my failed win lottery tickets is what I've reused here as a collage. This painting is a collage. It's got some drawing elements because this is a drawing I did in 1990, so 24 years ago. I've utilized in this painting, in, in, this, um, in this artwork. And also, uh, there's found chips of paper. There's um, a ripped up passport application form, British passport application form ripped up. As there is also uh, uh, a box from pizza delivery shop down my street. So all the rubbish that comes through my door, I have managed to sort of reassemble as art material. And this is going way back to when I went to uni. I went to uni right at the onset of the structural adjustment program, Babangida structural adjustment program, which at that time, there was embargo on the importation of art materials for most Nigerian institutions. So um, the inventiveness that arose from that is the typical sort of inventiveness that has arisen in many of the other things that we do as a people. We are so resilient that we won't let one handicap hold us back and we'll forge ahead regardless of handicap. Thank you very much, Hassan. So this evening, we've been at the WAC gallery here in Waterloo and we've been looking at artist works um, who are all of Nigerian heritage who are part of this Nigerian Art Society, the NAC here in London. They represent artists who are of um, Nigerians who are here in the diaspora. And also here they've been responding, the title of this exhibition is called Nigeria at 100 transforming a British experiment and every artist showcasing in this show has responded to that theme. Um, so it is on till the 1st of November and we hope that you all come and check it out. There's some interesting works here and we hope that you come and see the show. Enjoy. Right, in there was a whole lot of interesting artists and fascinating works and we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did today. Thank you.